All right, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. No matter where you're joining from, it's always great to see you on these calls today. Um, this is Employee Center Academy. It's the July 2023 session. Very warm welcome to it. If you're attending the Academy session for the first time, let me give you some context behind it. These are monthly sessions. These are designed for you to deep dive on a particular topic with the product team and use it literally as your time to ask questions and interact with the product team. We don't want to treat this as a presentation. We will be configuring the product live. So the idea is that um, we take a topic and we deep dive and not necessarily just present at a high level. We want to go deep on it. And we do this every month. Every month we pick a topic um, and uh, deep dive on it. Once you enroll for Employee Center Academy, you basically register for all the, the, the entire series. Um, um, and uh, you should be having that in your calendar and getting emails from Live on Service now to attend these sessions. Our next session is going to be in August. Um, and, and the thumb rule is it's the third Wednesday of every month. So the next session with that thumb rule is August 16th. Now, in terms of logistics, many of you may be new with, to this platform. So you should see a Q&A panel at the bottom. Please use that to ask your questions. Um, and uh, there is a chat uh, uh, button as well. Use that for, you've already been using, use that for any comments, any, any sort of um, interaction you would like to have with the audience over here. We, we always have a global audience and people with all kinds of different maturity with Employee Center. So always fun to see um, how people can learn from each other on these calls. Don't worry about the slides and videos um, um, the, being available, uh, being able to like, we, we are recording this and we will make sure the slides as well as the recording is available for you um, after this session. And uh, typically you can see on YouTube, a complete playlist of all the past Employee Center Academy sessions. All right, with that, our topic for today is campaigns and content analytics. Um, this is part of the employee communications capabilities uh, with Employee Center Pro. So it does require the Employee Center Pro license. And um, it, this comes up a lot, so I'm starting with that. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about these, uh, hold on to that. But let me first introduce myself. Uh, my name is Pooja Gupta, I'm your host, also the presenter for today's session. Um, I'm an outbound product manager with the Unified Employee Experience team at ServiceNow. This is the team that builds products which are literally employee facing and works across different workflows within ServiceNow to make sure they are unified experiences that we are creating from a end user perspective. I'm joined by two of my esteemed colleagues. There's Corey, who leads up the uh, inbound, uh, who leads up the product team that creates the entire employee communications capabilities, and Rafa, who leads the engineering team um, for the same capabilities. Both of them will be jumping in um, as as we take your questions and address um, some of the things that you've been, um, like some of the feedback that we received from you today. Um, we also have additional experts on the call, so please don't shy from asking your questions. Please use the Q&A panel as much as you can. All right, what will we cover today? So we will, of course, deep dive into what is a campaign, what's included in content analytics. We'll do a live demo. We will basically like build a campaign from scratch, and we will show how to enable analytics and all of that. And we will also discuss best practices. Now. Since these are monthly and these are like topic deep dive sessions, I wanna make sure we are keeping some generic questions on like, how do you get on Employee Center? What features are included out of scope for this discussion and keep it focused on campaigns and content analytics. We have an extremely rich Employee Center community where there are quite a few um, resources available in terms of implementation guides, FAQs, best practice guidance, and you can find all our events also over there. Um, use that as a way to get any of your basic questions answered. In addition to that, um, you will see a link coming on your uh, chat to register for all our Live on Service Now events. And a couple of them that I want to highlight is Employee Center Deployment Office Hour. So this is one hour, just Q&A. There's no presentation. It's not very structured. It says, like, just come and ask your questions um, kind of session. 
where we focus on all your basic deployment questions. So um, please register for this. This is also every last Tuesday of a month. So it's a monthly session. And the next session is the very next week. We also have content experiences office hours. Here we deep dive on capabilities like the one that uh, is on our topic for today, that is campaigns and content analytics. And, and again, this is attended by the product team, the engineering team. So a great way to just get on a call with them, um, discuss where you are struggling, what your adoption challenges are, what you would like to learn about any of these capabilities. So I highly recommend um, joining these office hours. There's no easier way to get your questions answered. In addition to that, there's a lot of resources. You will get these deck. Uh, a common question that we get is related to setting up employee-centric taxonomy. Um, and there's a lot of resources on it. Please use these resources, as well as questions on migrating from service portal to employee center. So again, there's a lot documented. Please keep those questions out of scope for these for this discussion today. Um, so yeah, um, just a quick call out before we, like since we are talking about resources, there's a course on Employee Center. This will give you a good walkthrough for all Employee Center related and Employee Center Pro related capabilities. And if you're self-implementing, we also have a success pack by now create. So these links are all that you can see um, um, on chat coming soon. All right. So let's jump in, let's talk about campaigns. And like I mentioned, this is part of our employee communications capability on Employee Center Pro. Now, in any organization, it's extremely important to be effective in the way you communicate with the with your employees. It could be for things like, you know, um, like benefits is coming, uh, benefit enrollment is coming. It's a common example that we use here. Um, and, um, um, People, if they don't get on their correct, they don't update their benefits plan, they will actually lose coverage. And that can affect their lives, their, their uh, everything that they, um, their health, their productivity, and then all of that in, in future. So effective communication is critical to drive employee actions, to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do, to make sure the work does not break. Um, deflect common inquiries. There are often like simple questions that keep getting asked about, for example, when is the next uh, company well-being holiday, uh, things like that. So all of those um, things that keep getting asked common questions can be deflected by effective communication or proactive communication. Engaging employees on company-wide activities, reducing manual work, and this plan will work especially in terms of how, um, how that communication is made or like you know, the consequences of not having the right information at the right time. So you'll have to repeatedly do those things. Um, improving employee productivity and improving employee experience are just the things that come because you're doing the other things well. Now, if you think about the employee communications, there are multiple different kinds of employee communications. And when we are thinking about um, supporting these communications, these are the at least the types that we have in our mind. One is time-based. So, you know, there is a new announcement, there is um, there is something as an event or an initiative that has happened. And it is like, it's a defined period of time when you want to like make that um, um, information available for um, um, employees. Um, other is action-based. You want employees to do something um, and and make sure they do it on time and are not delayed. Some of it is like, you know, let's say security training um, that needs to be done and you want people, there are like hundreds of emails that go out for it and then, you know, sometimes are not still completed. So how can we use proactive communication for things like that so people do what they're supposed to do to make sure the business is running? And then there are certain things which are situation-based. You know, there's a five-year anniversary, there's a new hire, there's someone who is leaving on parental leave. So it's it's a different um, situation that that particular user is in, and you want to have like some sort of tailored communications for that. So we support all of these, and like you know, the the campaigns functionality is sitting in the heart for how we enable all of these different um, communication types. So. Um, give it, getting back to communications, um, Employee Center Pro is our 
portal where all the employee center communications um, are kind of centered. So you would need to have employee center pro. Um, if you are familiar with it, and if you have seen it, you would probably have seen the content experiences widget, which has this actionable targeted banners at the very upfront. Um, and, and at the same time, there are things like videos, events um, that you can post. It also comes with a very nice backend to actually author these um, you know, communications in a very easy to use drag and drop um, interfaces and uh, you know is backed by um, um, a good um, content ownership workflow, translations workflow, preview workflows, and all of that. Now what con campaigns does, it basically picks up all these different content types, um, I'll get there, um, uh, and, and creates a, um, a nested uh, link between all of these different content that can be posted in various different pages. I'll talk about it a little bit more. But before, um, if you think about plugins and different experiences, there is content publishing, which is just about how we can create, manage, and publish content. There is content experiences, which is the everything that we will talk about today in terms of campaigns. There's content governance, which is about you know end-to-end -end request process. And there's content analytics, which is measuring the impact of the communications that we have made. In our discussion today, we will be focusing mostly on campaigns and content analytics. So we won't be going through the content publishing flow. But that's a topic that we have covered in one of the previous Academy sessions. So um, please, please feel free to um, go and look into those if you are interested. Okay. Um, another basic fundamental thing that I want to talk about before we start talking about campaigns is when you think about the different communication content on Employee Center, it, it, it can vary quite a bit. Um, so there is portal content, which have banners, videos. There's also mobile content. There's also to-do content. These are like literally tasks that can be assigned to users. Um, and it shows up in their My Task uh, experiences or My Task pages. And there's notification that can go out via email, SMS, Microsoft Teams, and so on. So it's a multi-channel, multi, -channel, multi um, and I'll talk about why we say multi-staged um, experience that we are building with communications on Employee Center Pro. So what is a campaign? I've been kind of like giving hints of what it is. It is basically an automatic triggering, uh, triggering of content that is um, defined in buckets or bundles. It's multi-channel, so it could be like posted into um, um, any 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 end device, like it's portal or it is mobile. Um, and it is in a predefined sequence, location, audience, all of that. So a basic example is what you can see um, in this flow chart here. So there is return to workplace is what you are trying to, and this is, this is also the example that we will try to build today in our demo. Um, the first one is, you know, you could have like some set of communications going on to, Tell people that you know you are going to return back to work or you're expected to return back to work on this particular day. So you have a single bundle which says save the date, and there's like a couple of banners or something else associated with it for that bundle. Once that is over, then you would probably want to have second set of communications that are going on to welcome people into the office. And again, you have like different content that is targeted to different users depending on where they are located and so on, and different types of uh, tasks that you may want to assign users depending on whether let's say they are managers or employees, um, all of that is bundled in one place. And then you want to have like um, a survey or some sort of um, closing for that communication to make sure people had a good experience or there was anything that you can improve and you probably have how we are doing as a sec as the third bundle. So what you're doing is it's the same communication that is spanned across weeks or like a duration of time and you have bundled it into different stages to make sure um, communication is automatically going as, as the defined triggers that you have to, uh, defined for these stages are hit. It'll, be, it'll make a lot more sense when I start, you know, digging further into it, but hopefully up till now it's it's clear and 
keep posting your questions. I'm seeing a question on like, you know, where are campaigns used and like what are the use cases? Um, the, if you would think about the different types of communications that I was talking about um, some time back, communication campaigns can be used for any of these. And I'll give you some examples of pre-built campaigns that we have um, in our demo environment, which will probably make you um, give you some more examples of what they can be used for. Now, if you think about what is composed within a campaign or what 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 are the different pieces of a campaign, first is, of course, audience. Like who who is that communication for? And um, the way we have campaigns defined here, you can actually have a super arching audience defined at the campaign level and then also refine the audience at each content level. So you can actually have, you know, this communication is for anyone who um, who is not in US. And then, you know, at the content level, say who is not in US, who is a manager um, in Europe or like, you know, and differentiate what communication goes out at each content level. So defining the audience and refining that audience is one big piece of campaigns. Um, the second one is trigger. When do you want this campaign to be enabled? And we will walk you through different types of triggers that you could have in just a minute. But you have to think about, um, like especially when you start thinking about the stages or the bundles um, of content, when do you want that to be triggered? Um, is is an important decision to be made as you are designing these campaigns. Then where is that communication made? That's the location. So like you you can go to like a widget level um, definition of like, you know, this particular communication needs to live in this topic page and on this widget, you can do that. But essentially you do have to plan at the entire campaign level as well as each content level where, where each piece of your communication is going to live. So it's, it's essentially your entire campaign strategy or communication strategy. And then lastly, but of course not the least, is what exactly is your content? Um, and uh, um, the campaign is actually built out of all the content that is stored in your content library, which is essentially the content publishing um, uh, workflows that we have. Um, and you can, when I'll demo, you will see that there's a direct integration with content library, so you can drag and drop content from the library into the campaign. You'll hear me talk about this, but uh, a, an easy way to build a campaign or like to make sure you're not struggling with it is to like first build the content. Think about what content you want to deliver as part of the campaign and uh, um, and then build the campaign because it's easy to just move content items across different stages. And um, um, one more point. So I, I did showcase that, you know, there is different types of content, um, portal, modification, task or to-do content. All of those can be made part of the campaign. So it's a really, really nice way to connect all of these different types of content into one single story. A little bit more in terms of uh, targeting. Um, so it does use the audience field that we have defined for like content publishing, which is extremely flexible. So it can be based on user criteria. It can be based on HR criteria. You can upload a file which has uh, um, like the details or like the, the details of the audience that you want. Um, you can even refine who you really need in the um, in the audience. So it's very um, um, it's very targeted. You can be as targeted as you want it to be um, to to really make sure the right communication is reaching the right set of audiences. This is the stage trigger types. Um, you can. There's multiple different options that you have to trigger a communication. One could be immediate. You do define a start and an end date. So as soon as the start date is hit, you like you would want that communication to be delivered. There could be a fixed date. You want it to be just on this particular date. So think of like from a return to workplace example, let's say your company expectation is that, you know, on July 4th, you want everyone to be back. Um, that's That's the date you would want some particular communication to go out. 
again, dynamic is another option. So you could say like, you know, based on when the employee joined, let's say you have a new hire campaign um, and um, you want to say the one week after the employment start date, we want this particular communication to go out. That, that would be a great example for dynamic. Then there are to do completion, like, you know, once something is completed, it, you could have like, um, let's say there is a video to be watched or a survey to be taken, and we'll showcase that. Once that survey is completed, you just send an automated email that says, thank you for taking that survey. That's another trigger type. And then you can also have like a condition built, like, you know, the a set of different factors, excuse me, that you're looking into to make sure the communication is very precise if those conditions are met. And last but not the least, this is something we newly added um, in the past few months is recurring. So let's say you, you want to like, you know, there's often a lot of manual work um, required to drive engagement at like, you know, for special occasions like birthdays, anniversaries. Um, you can automate that by having a recurring um, trigger type in which you are just saying every work anniversary of this employee send this email out or every birth they send an email out like this, which, which you know, has this, maybe it's a, if you wanna make it even more special, it's basically, you know, a GIF with candles on the homepage of the portal uh, and so on. So you can actually have a set of communications de defined to drive engagement on special occasions like this. Okay, now all of this, comes together in this tool called Content Experiences Builder. So the campaigns functionality had gone through a rename um, a few months back. So a lot of it is actually called Content Experiences um, within the system. So the Content Experiences Builder is essentially the builder for you creating campaigns. And we will use this. You can see from the screenshot that it is very well integrated with content library. So on the left-hand side, there is this whole content library where you can see all the different kinds of content that is available for you to be utilized within the campaign. And then you can see like different stages that are there and we will actually go through um, uh, the, the content builder, the content experiences builder today in the demo. Cool. So I want, before we jump to the demo, I do want to talk about content analytics. Corey, Raf, is there, uh, is there any question in the Q&A or chat that we should add or anything you want to add? Um, nothing specific. We're just kind of, yeah, we're just answering various questions. Um, so I think so far so good. Sounds good. Awesome. So let me cover very briefly what is content analytics and then we will jump into the demo and then we can, you know, go further into your specific questions. So if you think about just analytics, and this is with Employee Center Pro, um, there are multiple different options available. One is user experience analytics, which is a platform capability. So everyone has it, uh, not just Employee Center Pro. And that gives you a lot of very rich tools or metrics to analyze literally the user behavior on the portal. So you can create funnels to see where they are going. Um, you can you can create events to like, you know, see how many of your users are actually hitting this particular event and so on. So that's a whole thing to, to do analytics at the portal level. Like, you know, how is your portal experience? Then we have content analytics, which is an Employee Center Pro capability. And this is, it provides a little bit of content, uh, sorry, portal analytic metrics as well. But the purpose for this is to analyze the effectiveness of your campaigns. And we will dive deep into this one. So it's literally looking into like, you know, the tasks that you have um, assigned, how many of them are completed. And we I'll talk about the exact metrics that are tracked, but this, the purpose is to measure campaigns. Keep that in mind. And the third one here is, um, is a success dashboard, which is looking into, you know, all the investments that you're making from improving an employee experience standpoint or improving the workflows around how your services are delivered from IT and HR and other BUs, how successful those investments are. 
All of these three are out of box analytics. Um, just the content analytics one requires you to have Employee Center Pro. Everything else is available for everyone. Um, we will be diving deep into content analytics um, because the topic is campaigns. Now, if you look deep into content analytics, what we are tracking are actually listed over here. So there's a little bit of portal tracking as well. So we do page views, unique unique visitor views, and you can actually set profiles within um, within content analytics, which you, which will allow you to track additional few things depending on what kind of profile you have created. Um, I'll walk you through that as well in, in, in very quickly. From a campaign tracking perspective, the, the metrics that you see listed here are the ones that we are tracking out of box. So just to explain the terminology, um, a banner click through would be someone who has clicked through a banner. Whereas a banner impression is someone who has logged in the portal and has actually, the banner has rendered on that page. So you see, you know that this person has seen that banner because they went on that page and the banner rendered on that page. So we have that click through download and impression in, in across all different content types. Hopefully this made sense. And then um, there are certain steps that you will have to take to enable this analytics platform. Um, the campaign space is like, as soon as you download Employee Center Pro, you get it. But for analytics, you do have to download additional plugins. At the minimum, you need the content analytics plugin. So um, no additional licensing required. It's just a separate store download that you would have to do along with Employee Center Pro to activate the analytics piece. And then the performance analytics gives you additional dashboards for um, portal analytics uh, and content engagement analytics. So um, we recommend downloading these two applications as well. And then I'll walk you through this again, but the step two over here is that you have to activate the profiles manually and you have to also set a default profile because um, in a lot of places it is looking for the default profile that is set up. So you must set up a default profile. And the most important piece is once you have the plugins installed, the profile set up, when you are creating the campaign, you must activate the tracking. You can go back and activate it later, but you have to edit the campaign and all of that. It's a long process. The better is that, you know, as soon as you're starting, you um, activate the tracking. You do have to wait for 24 hours at the minimum for any data to show up. Um, and then you have like really rich content analytics dashboard, which I will briefly walk you through today to analyze how the engagement is and, and how your campaigns are doing. Right, with that, we will get into the demo. And while I'm trying to put that up, if there are any questions that we should answer, Corey, Rafa, feel free to bring those up. No, yeah, just still kind of, um, it, it's just a very broad spectrum of questions. So um, we haven't been getting a whole lot of like the same questions, but uh, yeah, we're just plugging away. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll also have additional time in the end. So like if there's anything that comes up uh, as a similar question, we can go through at that time. All right, so this is my instance. This is the home for that instance. If you would go on the um, the navigation bar here and search for content, um, I just want to walk you through some of the basic things over here. So content publishing is everything that you would need from the publishing standpoint, like your audiences, your content, all of that is defined over here. There is uh, content experiences, which has the content experience builder. I hope you can see my screen well. Wait, am I still sharing my screen? Is my screen shared, Corey, so far? Yep, yep, yes. we see. Okay, okay, awesome, thank you. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so content experiences builder is where we will be going to um, to set up the campaigns. So let me go there. So yeah, so here are all the different campaigns that have been built. Um, let me, yeah. 
So you would see that there are some uh, some campaigns built for manager hub. There are some campaigns built for like open enrollment, um, new hire. There is something for career hub, and like you know, you could have um, campaigns built that are not necessary going on like employee center home pages. It could be also for just manager hub. So it's essentially a campaign can be for any portal page, and any any. Like you can just have for mobile, you can just have for emails. That that's one thing I wanted to clarify. So um, before I get into any of the pre-built ones, let's hit new. This will give you. Um, this is when you are starting to build. So let's say I say return to work. Demo the title. The audience is like the the super set of the audience that you're defining. Let's say I want this to be only US employees. So I say US users. These are all like what you would see over here are all the different audiences that you have defined in that instance. Now you can have an uh, approver um, workflow associated with this campaign. So not any of your content authors are publishing. Um, can big campaigns and you can you can have like certain approvals defined. The approvals need to have that campaign approval role. So um, once you have that role assigned, anyone in that role assigned can actually be marked as an approver. Then there's a start date. I'm just gonna pick for today. And then let's say, Um, and then the reevaluation of, um, of the campaign is something that you know. Let's say you have, um, let's say you have a new hire campaign, and you want to make sure the the audiences that or the users that have been identified as like targeted um, personas for the communication, you want to keep that to be updated. So you reevaluate the campaign, and you are defining the frequency in terms of days. So you can say every two days, I want you to check for which users are, are to be added into this communication or removed from this communication. So this is a very interesting feature to keep in mind. Then you see this tracking on. Once you have this tracking on, that is what will enable the content analytics. And here you can define what profile you want to use. Um, on uh, out of box, we have like in, in my instance, there's like a third profile also, but there's content experiences, there's content publishing. Um, you could, if you have Google Analytics plugged in, you could have that as well. So I pick, pick content experiences profile just for this case and I say submit. And here is my, I could have said save also, and then that would have continued the journey. Um, so on top, let me explain this interface. So on top, you see an overview that provides a brief summary of everything that's associated with the campaign. That includes the bundles or the stages. It includes what content, who the targeted audiences are. Right now, I have not defined any of those, so those are blank. Um, if there are any approvals, the actions are essentially you know, what we are tracking from like content analytics perspective. And campaign success goals is actually a very interesting feature. You can actually define success metrics for your campaigns and track that as part of the content analytics. So let's say um, you, um, you have a campaign because you have been receiving a lot of um, inquiries on, um, on, on move to another platform that you have coming up. So you can actually say that you know the effect of this campaign is to reduce the number of those inquiries and you can define it as like you know a, a parallel comparison of like campaign click through rates to be shown on one side and like the inquiries count to be shown on the other side and then you can do a comparison of whether you know the campaign could could actually did lead to um it's a correlation did actually did the campaign actually lead to a reduction in the inquiries so that's just an example. So you can actually define success goals like this and track it. So um, let's get into building this campaign. Now you could use the overview tab itself uh, to build it, but we don't recommend it. So what we recommend is to go on schedule for schedule of content. And this is a little bit more intuitive experience to build the, um, build the campaign out. So um, I say, create a stage. Give me a second. So let's say the stage one is, 
and I'm just going to use some um, simple um, simple namings, uh, but you may want to think through a little bit more in terms of how you create these. And the trigger type that I'm choosing over here is immediate, but you could again use any of these. It's my first stage, um, so I, I, I and I want to demo this, so I can just say like you know, as soon as I hit publish, this should be this should be made live. You can also offset the triggers. So this is an interesting feature, like especially like useful for like stage two, stage three. And you can say like, I want it to be immediate, but it is offset it by like whatever the stage one timing is defined. And then, you know, you offset it by five days or four days or whatever. So it's it's pretty interesting in that sense. So I define my first stage. So as, as soon as the stage is defined, you can see like, you know, the content that I have available from a content library perspective pops up on the right hand side. And here I can just say, um, um, let's say return. And I should have a style content that I have pre-built and I want hey. to just place it over here. Hey, Pooja, I'm mm -hmm. not sure we're seeing your pop-up window. So you might need to display all windows. Ah, okay, got it. So. I don't think we saw the stage pop up when you created it. Is this better? Do you see my pop up right now? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I I'll do the stage two, and then we can you know kind of go through that. Thank you for calling that out. Hey Pooja, since we uh, took one little break, one question that I uh, wanted to get in front of you was: Which version are we running here of uh, of content experiences? I believe this is the latest. This is the um, this is the June release, sorry, uh, May release. May. Okay. Yeah. But we didn't change the campaign. Even the previous ones should have this. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, so right now the stage, because you were not seeing my pop-up windows, right now the stage that I am in is I'm adding a styled content into my first stage. So as soon as I put it in, I can say this content is you know, I can define where I want this to be um, located. So let's say the page. Um, yeah, so let's say it's Ishi Pro dashboard and I want the widget instance to be content experiences header. So this is the banner widget right on top. Um, define all of these and then hit submit. And you can see, you can preview it from here. It's not a really pretty banner right now, but you can see what it is as a preview. Once it decides to open up. I am having some bandwidth issues today, so. Okay, maybe I need to wait for some more time because I just added it. Meanwhile, let me show you how to create a stage again. So I'm going to stay, create the second stage. So this is the stage where I want communications to be made for actually returning back to wait, uh, back to work. And let's say I have a fixed date for it. And I say, you know, today is 19, a week later is when I want it. Or let's say, you know, the, um, maybe August 2 is when we decided that the, the entire company should get back to work. So we make that as the start date. Notice that you can also define the time. So don't miss out on that. It's the date as well as the time that you can define. So maybe I'll just pick up nine o'clock. And I hit submit. So it's as easy as this to create um, create a stage. Um, all right, so I am the interest of time. I'm just going to go one more stage and then call it. Um, and let's say we call it a Oh, I probably have to have that. So. Let's assign the work first. Mm 
I'm just going to pick the pro. And I added a to do, which is to like play the video of like the return to work. Now let's see if I can, I should be able to create a third stage where I can tie with the completion of that to do. Yeah. So some uh, a task that you have assigned, if that is completed, that is what it would be the trigger for this third stage. And um, this one is a thank you survey email. And I say end campaign upon completion. So a very, very basic, um, basic structure, but you know, you can see how this is coming through. Um, I can move, I, let's say I want this banner to be part of this. Very easy to move it over here, move it back on the other side. Um, and let me show you how to refine the audience as well. Let's say, say I have a manager meetup for this. And I say like, you know, make this events visible. I can actually refine the audience for this by saying edit content and you can say refine and I can say manager. I'm just gonna pick a different audience here cause I don't probably have the audience set up. You want to click the all to get rid of that name starts filter. Let me do that. Yeah. So users with manager rule, that's how I have it defined. Okay. So I say that and I say update. So here you can see I'm defining that, you know, this event is only for users with manager role. So it's going to do the two level targeting. First, what the campaign says, it is only for US users. From there, it is doing the second level of refining of the audience by saying users with manager role. And then let's see if we can preview. Um, so right now, if my bandwidth allows, but essentially that little I button shows you how this banner would look, what this banner is. So you can review the content. You can see like, oh, this, this, this banner doesn't have an image. You can actually hit edit content from here and then, you know, go um, and edit it, open it. And then, you know, you can open record and then edit it. So it's a very nice, uh, interface to just, you know, see um, everything come together. Questions on this that Rafa, Corey, or anything that you would want to add? Yeah, there's a, a question about editing, which I think is uh, an important, um, you know, an important topic. So the question is, is once a campaign has been published, um, can you edit it? And so the, the answer is yes, but only to a certain degree. Um, so you can basically, you can add new stages, you can add new content to that stages, to those stages. Um, you can, um, you can change, you can extend the life of a campaign. Uh, there are some restrictions. So if content has already been sent or targeted to users, they've already seen it, it's already been targeted. So it's not, uh, you can't change that, uh, impact. Um, and you cannot, um, change the trigger type of a stage. So once that trigger type has been saved and then published, um, you cannot change that to uh, trigger in a different way. So there are some limitations, but overall the campaign 
editing process is meant to allow for adjustments. If you're looking at your engagement and you see that you might need an additional stage with additional content to be triggered, you can uh, you can pause the campaign, add that new stage and content, and then republish for it to uh, to keep going. Thanks, Corey. Yeah. I'm also seeing questions on like how to preview it. So we do have a portal preview where you can actually pick up the stage where you want. You can actually see where, where um, like, you know, you can actually see everything returned to work um, and how that is being previewed. Um, so, um, so yeah, so you, there, there is um, quite a bit of, bit of preview capabilities that we have added. And actually, I'll add to the preview. So what's what's really great about the preview capabilities is that for each stage that has portal content, you can you can look at it as kind of the overarching campaign, but you can also uh, drill into both the stage and the audience, um, the audiences that have been refined. So if you're if you've refined content within a given stage just for certain audience members, an example of this might be like in that open enrollments, uh, benefits enrollment example, if you're targeting certain locations or certain benefits plans, uh, you know, people with those specific benefits plans, you can change the audience, uh, you know, and select that and, and preview in here in this view um, what uh, that specific audience might see. So uh, real handy preview functionality. It's, it's a live portal preview um, with the highlighted campaign content. So anything that's highlighted has not gone live yet. Thank you, Gori. And then I'm seeing a question on email targeting. So essentially it's the same, like you could, like if you would see there is a lot of these emails, like, you know, I did add an email over here. So you could have that. Um, so hopefully that answered it. If there's any other question on that in there, let us know. But um, like it's email is another content type that you could add as just uh, it will trigger as soon as it the the, the stage is triggered. Can multiple so, campaigns run in parallel? I think the answer is yes. Yeah, is yeah you can run as many as you'd like. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to hit publish over here and get out from this. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not like showcasing like how this will look and all that. Um, and going to jump on content analytics. Um, but if there are any confusion around it, we will be here to answer questions. So I'm going to pick up a different instance to show you um, content analytics, um, just because it does take time for uh, uh, the campaigns to you know, uh, start showing um, any data. We, it needs at least 24 hours, actually. So this is an instance with a little bit of built out um, data. Uh, and you can see um, in my screen, hopefully you all can view it. Um, there are multiple different dashboards. Um, there is a content analytics basics dashboard. This is basically, you know, um, this is if it decides to refresh. Yeah, so the content analytics basics is loading, but uh, let me walk you through it. It gives you all the portal analytics um, metrics that we have defined. Um, so if you're looking for page views, event views, all of that is going to go on uh, the content analytics basics. So yeah, so visits per day, page views per day. Um, like this is just the basic set of metrics that you can have on portal tracking. So I, I do recommend using user experience analytics instead for this. But if you like, if your content authors want to use this meta data and correlate it with any of their campaign data, this is available as part of content analytics as well. Then um, campaign overview gives you um, a summary view of all the different campaigns that are um, going on. So this is an example, like in this instance, we have three campaigns which are live um, and are published. And you can see like, you know, how much engagement or how much completion we are getting in across those three. Um, the same metrics, events, activity, events by count, by action, you can see like, you know, different content types um, and see all these different uh, metrics that we are targeting. 
I'm not going completely to across all metrics, but if there's anything that you think, Corey, Rafa, that we should expand on, let me know. Um, I do want to showcase campaign analytics, where essentially we are picking up um, a particular campaign. So yeah, so we pick up a campaign and we pick up like, let's say I want to test open enrollment. Um, and this is now giving the metrics specific to this particular campaign. And you can also see like, you know, refine it by duration. Let's say you just wanna see what was the um, what was the engagement this week over this year? So that that refinement you can do. You can um, you can literally see how many days it has been running for, and the same metrics that I was showcasing from a camp campaign's overview perspective can be tailored down to a particular campaign. Yeah, one thing I'll add that is really useful. We've we've heard from customers is um, one of the reports. You can see a to do tab there. I don't know if there's any to dos associated with this campaign, so it may not show in the demo, but this to-dos tab actually lists any to-dos that were sent within the campaign, and it gives you the ability to see uh, who has completed or not completed the task. So theoretically, you could export uh, from this graph, you could export a list of, um, of individuals who have not completed a to-do. This is a great example of where you might use the edit feature. Um, maybe you've got a to-do that's been sent, um, maybe there's a, uh, a set of folks who haven't completed the to-do, and as part of the campaign, you want to uh, stop the campaign, edit it, add a new stage that sends maybe a specific email to those users. You would you would take that, um, that spreadsheet of users and import that as a new audience, and then, uh, you know, add that uh, to-do uh, as a refined audience within the new stage or the to-do list as a refined audience. Um, so real handy way to uh, to kind of drive some urgency and then and then have follow up um, communication sent to uh, folks that you want to complete a task. Thank you. It's a really powerful feature. So you can do a lot like is and there's a lot of different capabilities here. So that what Corey is talking about is just a part example to you know drive actionability and get more control on your communications. The last tab here is the campaign impact. So if you do have any sort of goals set, you can see those goals or the data has been highlighted over here. Um, again, I'm not going super deep in this one, but um, if you want, I can showcase, let's say, I don't think I can do that right now, but, um, um, yeah, it's let's pick up this one and I can showcase. So yeah, so if I go on campaign success goals and I hit new, see it is showcasing like what kind of goal you want. Is it a deflection goal? Is it like drive action goal? And you can literally define what table you want to track, what's your evaluation criteria and, and what's your target. And you can literally see all of these things listed on that particular section of campaign impact in the content analytics. So just wanted to highlight this as we close. Um, few more minutes left. We are all happy to take any additional questions. I'll jump in just as to reiterate, um, we, we tend to get this question a lot, um, but you know maybe folks missed it or sh uh, showed up a little later. So. Um, the, the functionality that you've seen in this demo all comes with the uh, EC Pro uh, either standalone SKU or as part of an HRSD Pro or Enterprise SKU. There's no additional costs. And uh, Pooja, maybe one thing you could do is just show the slide with the four quadrants that have the four yeah. plugins because we definitely got a lot of questions about the plugins. Um, the, the four plugins are content publishing, content experiences, here we go, content governance and content analytics. All four of these plugins are part of what we call the content experiences kind of suite of capabilities. Um, and each of these are included as part of the Employee Center Pro install. So um, definitely content publishing and content experiences, I believe governance and analytics are more optional. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, the, and then yes, we do release on the ServiceNow store. 
So, um, you, you know, over time, once these are installed with your Employee Center Pro, if for some reason you didn't want to upgrade your Employee Center Pro, um, you know, capabilities or plug-in um, individually by the store, you can still do that uh, for these plugins yep. to get the latest features every quarter. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, these are like common confusion points. So thank you for highlighting that. Yeah. Before we close, I... I'd... Go ahead. Do you mind if I mention something yeah, yeah, yeah. or a few questions? So there was a, a couple of questions about um, performance and, and upper limits. And I just want to I just want to say out loud that uh, we have some staggering mechanisms, some properties that um, basically define how the content is going to be delivered in different stages. And that basically avoids performance impacts uh, to the instance. It just sometimes it takes a bit longer for the content to be delivered, just because we don't want to basically overload the instance, but trying to deliver all the content at once, that the ones that uh, Puja is showing over there. Um, yeah. A lot of different options in this. Yeah, you can define ownership. You can define like, you know, what are your thresholds for like number of notifications that you want to send. Um, same thing with to-dos and audiences. One interesting one in this, which I did not call out earlier was that, um, where is it? Um, Maybe I need to click here. There is an option to actually say that uh, we want our um, campaigns to be triggered immediately as soon as they are hit publish. So, um, are you okay. looking at the content publishing or content? Yeah, you, you need to go under content experiences advanced. Okay. I was like, I did see it last time. Where did it go? Yeah, and that one is a very important option uh, because otherwise you will be basically relying on scheduled jobs that run once a day. Uh, they are run at night, but you can always pick that option. And, you know, the campaign will be triggered immediately and those scheduled jobs will be triggered immediately. Um, can you point me to it? But somehow I'm missing it in my instance here, it looks like. So it's under content experiences. down here okay yeah and then just scroll down and there you go use to manage whether yeah. you want to trigger yeah yeah otherwise if you don't have this clip there is a schedule job that's run at a defined duration and the campaign would have to wait for that schedule job to be run before it is actually published so this is a good way to just making sure their campaigns are not delayed and are being published immediately. All right, we are- hey, there One last thing, is there a campaign running on your instance that shows it on the portal front end just to kind of show that the banner is there from a, one of the campaigns? Um, I did publish the one that I just created. Let's take a look. Um, let me impersonate as Fred Luddy. I know he's in one of the- hmm. Yeah, so this is what we just published. Get back in the loop. This was the one that we were previewing for yeah. US employees. So this this does show up. Cool. And yeah. So that just wanted to kind of uh, close that close the loop. Speaking of. <laughs> yeah, and then manage like Fred Luddy is also a manager, so he does see that manager meetup as well. This wasn't defined to be very specific to return to workflow, but the workplace, but it is there as part of the campaign. So I had that trigger set to publish them immediately. Um, so this is all there uh, and visible as soon as I hit publish. All right, um, thank you so much. We are a little over, but uh, be comfortable working in production. These, these are to be made in production, uh, created in production because you know your audiences is different. Your content is going to be like so use the approvals and preview capabilities to validate and you know be comfortable working in production we already spoke about properties and we also mentioned that you know first work on your content it makes building the campaigns a lot easier all right thank you so much there's a little bit of product glossary here we'll have the we'll share the slides so feel free to go through it but thank you and have a great rest of your day